It's day 18 of my tour across the United States and I'm aiming to reach downtown Pittsburgh this evening. I spent last night in this RV that two complete strangers, Barney and Karen, offered me so I could avoid sleeping in my tent during yesterday's stormy weather. This campground is next to the Allegheny River on the Armstrong Trail, which I'll be riding 9 miles southbound until reaching the town of Kittening. From there I'll cross westbound over the Allegheny River and start riding 45 miles over more of Pennsylvania's hilly country before reaching downtown Pittsburgh. Last night's storm was a significant one downing several trees and many branches along the Armstrong Trail. I hopped over a couple of these downed trees and rode around large branches while enjoying this cool and peaceful early morning. On the way I stopped to check out the Allegheny River Lock and Dam number 8 before continuing on and getting myself into a bit of trouble while crossing over the South Fork Pine Creek on one of the Armstrong Trail's wooden bridge. The wooden planks of the bridge were wet and slippery causing me to slide and fall off my bike. I wasn't injured but I did take a loss of a different kind. Just when I thought I had enough adventure, like yesterday, I wake up this morning to lose my main camera. I don't know how I'm gonna get it. It went right through one of those holes. And somewhere down there. Holy shit. Oh my god. I'm totally butt naked. I, I dropped the GoPro from up there. And then uh, I found a way to get down here. It wasn't easy. I had to go through this neighborhood. And I took all my clothes off and just jumped in there and <laughs> tried to get in and I found it. Oh man. I slipped on the wet lumber up there and when i picked up the bike the gopro fell off and it dropped the whole way from down there and i just got in the water here just looking through it and touching and diving in there and i finally found it let's get back to it <laughs> I can't believe I got my my camera back. That was pure luck that I found it. I was sitting with my hands and my feet and I barely tapped it with my feet. It felt like a rock or something hard. I just dug in there and, and I grabbed it. I was like, oh my God. Not long after the fiasco with the camera, I ran into two older gentlemen, Bob and Ab, who were riding electric assisted trikes and shared some local knowledge with me. 
two part minutes. of the Gap Trail that goes from Pittsburgh down to yep. All right. Maryland. Yep. Maybe? Yep. Yep. Yeah, Maryland, yeah. Cumberland, Maryland. You go yeah, by the, the so Gap I'll be trail. doing Three it. Three River Stadium, Heinz Field, the casino down there. <laughs> yeah, you go right through all of that. that. It's nice meeting you guys. Right along the Same river here. Take it all easy. Right. See ya. Have Safe travels. Enjoy See you, Bob. Talking to you, sir. See you. Same here. Bye, Ab. Keep at it, man. I better re-energize this thing. Quits after five minutes. <laughs> it's on now. Thank you. See ya. Have fun. That's a great example of how these uh, electric bikes can do so good for so many people. I'm really a fan of them because both of them said that they just can't ride around their neighborhoods without the electric assist because it's hilly and I can attest to that. So if a bicycle that has a little juice to offer them, gets them out there pedaling as much or as little as need be, why not? I reached the town of Kidney and take a quick look riding through some of its neighborhoods and its business district. The town had a relaxed feel to it that was of great contrast to what I would be getting into later on in Pittsburgh. I took the time to eat breakfast at a local diner before heading over to the Judge J. Frank Graff Bridge to ride over the west side of the Allegheny River where I would start climbing the Pennsylvania Hills once again. I have 1500 plus feet of climbing to do to get to Pittsburgh. Been a while on this one. Legit, it's gonna have a beautiful drop on the other side. It wasn't too bad, not too bad a grade, just a very long hill. I'm back in the roof in the hills, the little steep hills of Pennsylvania. <sighs> they are steep, super steep. The girl in that uh, convenience store, BJ's Country Store, uh, tell me that uh, it's all downhill from here to Pittsburgh, but also a police officer who was parked here just a second ago. During the last three days, I have ridden close to 200 miles, climbing about 6,700 feet in elevation. My legs were toast and needing some downtime to recover, so I was looking to not climb any more than I had to, but Pennsylvania had one more serious hill up its sleeve for the day. If you're ever in Pennsylvania and somebody tells you that it's all downhill from now, don't ever believe them. This for real right here. Deep as can be and long, really long. Legit climb, legit. Even though this was the last climb for the day riding over the Harrison Hills on Freeport Road, I ended up finding myself a different set of challenges. The route I chose to ride into Pittsburgh did not have a bike path or hardly any shoulders for me to ride on. To safely navigate through this type of scenario, I used my rear view mirror to spot the waves of vehicles created by the alternating effect of traffic lights. When I see them coming, I simply get off the road, wait until they pass by, and the road eventually clears up. This slows down my progress, but since I'm never timing myself and have plenty of daylight left, I don't mind.
for these 15 miles, I rode into the congestion of traffic passing through Harrison Township, Natrona Heights, Tarrington, and finally Springdale before I found a much welcome narrow bike path and later a nice shoulder to ride on. Very difficult to ride on this road. There's absolutely no shoulder and gazillion cars. They're being nice, but I feel like I'm in their way. While waiting for a pedestrian signal to change at a street crossing at the Halton Bridge, I asked a good Samaritan some advice about routes to downtown Pittsburgh. Sure enough, he alters my original plan and leads me down the right path with a huge shoulder for several miles. Got me a shoulder. I was about to take a left there, but this guy was like telling me not to. And that if I keep going another four miles this way out of 12 that I gotta do or less, that I'll hit the, the downtown bike path. I can't wait. I'm ready to get out of this uh, congestion, but I think I'm out of it. I see a really big lane for me here. That was a great example of how important it is to uh, always ask local people whenever you get a chance. I always do. That guy told me not to take the left that I was about to take because there was uh, construction on this road and that I would have a real clean open lane all the way to the bike path and sure enough here's the lane all cleared up for me I went from I went from no lane to like a entire road for me I'm really in a, a couple of miles or so from the downtown area of Pittsburgh and uh, just going through all these neighborhoods. It's really interesting. A lot of fun, really. And uh, I've been s switching off between uh, being on the road and then getting on the sidewalk when I can. Being on the sidewalk, though, you have to be really careful because cars don't they don't really look for the sidewalk like they do on the road for other cars and bicyclists like me when I come about so you got to be really slow and careful Take your time. I ride past the boroughs of Blanix and Sharpsburg where I decide to ride against the traffic up an exit ramp on the William Finn Highway, allowing me to cross the Allegheny River on the 62nd Street Bridge. I just got some really bad, uh, bad looks from uh, some drivers coming up the ramp. That was pretty easy, a lot easier than the stairs. I don't tend to break any traffic laws, but in this case I felt it safe enough to do. I waited and watched to see how much traffic was exiting on the ramp before timing my move and there were hardly any cars driving by. My other option was to lift my 80 pound bike up a very high and steep flight of steps to reach the pedestrian walkway. I wasn't keen on leaving half my rig on a tendon on one end or the other, nor wanted to walk up and down several times. It seemed easier to ride up the ramp and get across the bridge. I finally ride into the city of Pittsburgh's downtown and its vibrant energy is evident right away. The streets 
streets are bustling with traffic and people walking and riding around in bicycles and scooters and whatnot. Beautiful buildings and bridges are everywhere and I soak up the sights as much as I can before finding a hotel to spend the night. My plan is to spend the next day riding around and learning what I can about the city of Pittsburgh before continuing south on the Great Allegheny Passage Trail. With a population of about 300,000, Pennsylvania's southwestern city of Pittsburgh is the second largest city in the state and the 68th largest city in the country. It is known as both the City of Steel for its more than 300 steel-related businesses and the City of Bridges for its 446 bridges. I'm in Pittsburgh now, checking out the city. I'm coming up on the confluence of, of the Monongalele and the Allegheny River which forms the Ohio River and it's right up here just a few uh, feet away. The reason for all the bridges is due to its location. Pittsburgh sits at the confluence of two rivers flowing from the east. On its northern bank is the Allegheny River and on its southern bank is the Monongahela. These two rivers converge here at the very western tip of the city at Point State Park and form the Ohio River, one of the most important rivers in American history. I ride around Point State Park Fountain enjoying the weather and the multitude of people strolling about. Being a Saturday and with such perfect weather there are also plenty of people boating and enjoying the rivers. To the north I notice Heinz Field, the Pittsburgh Steelers football stadium. I keep riding around Point State Park and eventually meet up with two locals at the park, Glenn and Ron, who offer to take me up to Mount Washington to see the amazing panoramic views. I just met up with this uh, two dudes, uh, Glenn and Ron. And, That's the uh, cool one. <laughs> they're pretty cool, they're inviting me to, to like team up and go along and go up the trolley, is it what you call it? Incline. It's, it's called an incline. It's called an incline, but it goes all the way up to Mount Washington and they say that the view from up there of the city is spectacular. Indeed. So we're gonna go from here, point of state, and the golden triangle that just state park and golden triangle. To uh, go up that incline and yeah. see what we see man. up there. He works hard for his money. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. the park and start riding on the Three Rivers Heritage Trail eastbound along the northern bank of the Monongahela River. It didn't take long before climbing up the Smithfield Street Bridge's northern ramp and crossing the Monongahela where Glenn tells me about John Roebling, the bridge's architect. The guy who um, architected this bridge, yeah. his name is Roebling. Okay. He, uh, he also did the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, really? Yeah, in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our first stop is at this restore factory turned shopping center to take a look at the Liberty Bridge. The steel cantilever bridge was built in 1928 and connects the city of Pittsburgh to the Liberty Tunnel in the South Hills neighborhoods. Both Glenn and I followed Ron's lead through several back roads along the George Couples Stadium and climbing up the PJ McArdle Roadway all the way to the northern entrance of the Liberty Tunnel. Climbing to the top of Mount Washington and McArdle Roadway where we spot the Monongahela Incline. This is when Glenn started asking Ron why we climbed instead of taking the incline like both him and I figured we would. There was some miscommunication between using the incline and actually riding up Mount Washington so for some reason Ronnie decided to uh, climb it. And now we're like in the process of climbing up this whole thing. <laughs> That's gonna have the museum that I suggest you take a look at. 
but we'll just go over here for now. Once at the top of Mount Washington, we ride along Grandview Avenue and immediately spot the first of several wedding parties we run into. Bunch of good looking people. How's it going? Thank you. It's easy to see why the views from here make for a superb wedding location. We're at uh, Mount Washington and the scenery here is insane. After checking out the panorama from the Patrick Fagan Overlook platform, Glenn says goodbye and Ron takes me down a more up the beaten path to a remote vantage point nearby. Ron's like bringing me through all these uh, like sort of hidden uh, pathways. He says he uh, grew up in, in Pittsburgh. Ron's a photographer, he uh, has his photography on social media, he's uh, working. So how long have you been a photographer? 87, 1987, yeah. And you have your photography where? Pittsburgh. No, like an Instagram or? Oh yeah. What's the name? It's uh, 522 Marchants, RJ Michael. To head back down to the city, we decide to ride the Duquesne Incline. This incline was open to the public in 1877 when Mount Washington was called Coal Hill. It attempted to solve the city's population expansion and Coal Hill's transformation of farm country into neighborhoods. It's 794 feet in length, rising to 400 feet in elevation at a 30% grade. It has an 18 passenger capacity and travels at about 6 miles per hour. Ron and I ride back towards the city on the Three Rivers Heritage Trail over the Monongahela River on the Fort Pitt Bridge and back down into Point State Park. We continue past the park northbound and over the Allegheny River on the Fort Duquesne Bridge reaching what is known as the north side. Well, we're crossing the Allegheny River now. Once we come off the ramp, Ron says goodbye and I thank him for having shared his city with me. His and Glenn's kindness and willingness to show me around is a testament to the city's prideful personality. I then turn west on North Shore Drive to take a look at this World War II Veterans Memorial the Steelers Heinz Field Stadium, and then the Pirates Stadium, PNC Park, formerly known as Three River Stadium. A Pirates baseball game was scheduled for this day, so there were plenty of people walking about getting ready. I took some time to check out this lively scene before heading east to the Andy Warhol Bridge and back over the Allegheny River into downtown Pittsburgh to finish this most excellent day. So I uh, messed up this morning and improperly changed my uh, derailleur and broke my rear derailleur. So now I'm heading to uh, the only bike shop that's open on a Sunday. Let's see if I can get me a, a new cable. I worked on my bike and got it fixed and changed the cable and got an extra one. And, uh, and going through the shop, I just noticed how amazing it is. This guy that owns it has an insane collection of antique bikes in there. Well, back on the road, late though. Not what I was expecting to do. 
I gotta say Pittsburgh has a lot of things to do. With a new shifter cable on my bike and an extra one in my spare parts bag, I make my way back towards the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers looking to start riding further south on the Great Allegheny Passage Trail. Once again I used the Three Rivers Heritage Trail riding past the Rivers Casino, back through Heinz Field Stadium, Fort Duquesne Bridge, and finally Fort Pitt Bridge. This city is truly a pleasure to ride all over in. It's sort of like an enormous playground for cycling. Everywhere seems accessible without having to get on the roads and there is so much to do and see. My time visiting Pittsburgh left me extremely impressed. This city came across to me as relatively compact but with so much to see and do. Almost as if it was an amusement park with such well designed bicycle assays throughout, all its bridges to ride over its rivers and venues to visit such as Heinz Field and PNC Park. My encounter with Glenn and Ron proved to be of great fortune as these two guys took me in and represented their city with all this kindness and respect. I will certainly return to this magnificent city, but for now it's onwards and back into Pennsylvania's Appalachia. Well, that was a blast. I miss uh, Pittsburgh already. I don't want to leave. I, I've had such a good time cycling through the city. It is a very bicycle friendly city, I would say. And there's so much to see in a very small area. I uh, would definitely come back here.